Remember that ridiculous lawsuit with that old lady who was driving with McDonald's coffee between her legs and she got into a fender bender at a red light and spilt the coffee all over her legs and then she sued McDonald's because the coffee was too hot and she actually won? That's not exactly what happened. Oh, geez. For those of you who don't know me, I am Viva Fry, a Montreal litigator turned YouTuber. I do these things called vlogs, V-L-A-W-G-S, where we break down and analyze something that's going on in the legal world in terms that can be understood by lawyers and non-lawyers alike. I can't park there. Today we are breaking down the Stella Liebeck versus McDonald's lawsuit, humorously referred to as the hot coffee lawsuit, and it is the unfortunate story of 79-year-old Stella Liebeck who got third degree burns over 6% of her body as a result of spilling hot coffee on her groin. Stella Liebeck sued McDonald's on the basis that the coffee was excessively hot, upwards of 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and she was actually awarded $2.7 million in damages by a jury. The judgment went to appeal and the party subsequently settled the lawsuit for an undisclosed closed amount, but something less than $600,000. The legacy of this lawsuit is that it has been used to exemplify an overly litigious society run amok. ABC News at the time referred to this lawsuit as a poster child for excessive lawsuits, but the reality is that it's a little more complicated than that and facts do matter. Facts are important, and more important than the facts are re-establishing the misconception of the facts. I was about 13 years old when this lawsuit went down and the judgment came out. I remember at the time thinking how idiotic it was that someone driving a car with a coffee between their legs gets into an accident, spills coffee on their legs, and then sues McDonald's because the coffee is too hot. I remember thinking that. But the reality is that was not the fact pattern. And we're going to discuss how it is that the facts got so misrepresented over time. But first, we're going to just reestablish the actual facts so that people actually know what actually happened. So first things first, Liebeck was not drunk. Am I saying Liebeck or Liebeck? Liebeck. Liebeck was not driving. She pulled up at a drive-thru with her son and ordered coffee. Her son parked the car so that she could add cream and sugar to her coffee. She put the coffee between her legs. When she flipped the lid off, it accidentally spilled all over her pants. She was wearing cotton pants, which melded to her skin. She got third degree burns over 6% of her body. She was hospitalized for eight days. She had to undergo multiple skin grafts. She lost 20% of her body weight. It turns out that the coffee was about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which can scald the skin in less than three seconds. And as it turns out, McDonald's had already faced something like 700 complaints for burns as a result of their coffee being too hot. McDonald's had already paid out more than $500,000 to settle claims for scalding resulting from their coffee being too hot. My food is coming. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Best bagel locks and cream cheese in Montreal, hands down. Now, knowing these facts, does this lawsuit still sound frivolous to you? Unsolicited pro-life tip, do not order bagel locks and cream cheese with one fried egg on your first date. Mm. Oh my gosh. And it's not just that McDonald's had received 700 complaints for scalding and paid out over half a million dollars in settlements. During the trial, McDonald's adduced evidence to the effect that the reason why they served their coffee so hot was because people wanted it to stay hot while they were driving in their cars. How's it going? <laughs> In reality, it was revealed during the trial that McDonald's had done research internally and they knew that most people wanted to drink their coffee right away. And nobody can drink a coffee that's 180 degrees right away. It never gets uncomfortable talking to a camera on the street. So a 12-person jury found McDonald's 80% responsible for the damages suffered by Liebeck. They awarded her $200,000 compensatory damages, which was reduced by 20% to $160,000. And they awarded Liebeck $2.7 million in punitive damages, which the jury justified by corresponding that number to the profits generated on sales of coffees for two days. The trial judge reduced the punitive damages to $480,000 for a total judgment award of $640,000 to Liebeck. Both McDonald's and Liebeck appealed the judgment, but they settled for a confidential and undisclosed amount, reportedly under $600,000. And now we get to the $2.7 million question. Knowing all of these facts, McDonald's had 700 complaints of people being scalded by their coffee. They paid out over $500,000 in settlement funds to settle claims of scalding from their hot coffee. By objective standards, the coffee was served at such a hot temperature that it would scald skin in under three seconds. The justification that McDonald's had for serving coffee this hot was in fact contradicted by their own internal research. Once I knew all of these facts, I could no longer write this decision off as the poster child for excessive litigation. As far as I am concerned, the actual fact pattern in this situation raises legitimate questions in liability and tort law. The biggest question I have in any of this is why weren't these facts being reported at the time? Why was the media dismissing this case as the poster child for excessive litigation in the US? 
A lot of people are going to raise the totally justifiable and understandable position that media cannot be expected to report on all of the fine details, legal nuances of every legal situation. Headlines have to be short, complicated matters have to be simplified. That being said, a lot of people are going to accuse the media of oversimplifying this particular case to write it off as the poster child of excessive litigation in order to push forward with massive tort reform in the United States. And what would the effect of tort reform be? The most obvious answer is that it would be immensely beneficial to big corporations in that it would limit the amount of damages that they could be expected to pay out in these types of lawsuits. My biggest takeaway from all of this above and beyond the classic song by Lazy Boy, We Only Read the Headlines, don't only read the headlines, don't rely on the information that is being cherry picked, spoon fed to you through media outlets. It is necessary to do your own research and find all the facts surrounding a given situation. If something seems absurd on its face, chances are that it probably is. And there might be a little bit more to the story than the headline, than the meme, than the two line summary that is being fed to you. As far as I am concerned, the McDonald's case is not the poster child for excessive litigation. It is the poster child for how oversimplification can quickly lead into actual total misrepresentation. Since the Liebeck judgment, there have been other lawsuits filed on the basis that coffee was too hot, which did not succeed. That said, certain changes did come about after the Liebeck lawsuit. McDonald's put bigger warnings on their cups and they made their cups more rigid that were less susceptible of folding or collapsing. Liebeck, for her part, suffered permanent disfigurement. She was partially disabled for over two years. She died at 91 with barely enough money to pay for a live-in caregiver. And before I get into the final takeaway of this lawsuit, if I may kindly remind you to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share my channel and help me grow, I greatly appreciate it. The final takeaway of this lawsuit, and it should be a mantra for every litigator out there, a bad settlement is better than a good trial because however good a trial goes, you never know what the jury or judge is going to award. And as relates to the settlement discussions in this file, I don't know what was public at the time of the trial, but McDonald's dropped the ball by not settling this as early as they could for an amount which would have been inconsequential. In fact, all that Liebig was even asking for at the beginning was compensation for her medical bills. Liebig only asked for $20,000 to settle the dispute and McDonald's could have walked away from it by paying a mere $20,000 to an elderly lady who was in fact horribly injured as a result of the temperature of their coffee. Setting aside how confident they were in their position, they could have settled it for $20,000, which would have been a fraction not only of the judgment they were ordered to pay, but of the legal bills they must have incurred in the process. And once Liebig filed suit, she was ready to settle for $300,000, McDonald's still said no. A mediator even suggested that McDonald's settle for $225,000 and McDonald's still said no. This is a quintessential example of no matter how strongly any lawyer feels in their case, a bad settlement is better than a good trial because you never know how something is going to end when it's left in the hands of a judge or jury, period, full stop. And on that note, now you know your vlog, peace out, boom!